through the wall of limited resources. What catalysis can do to save energy and create materials. Matthias Dries, Technische Universität, Berlin. My family suffered from the division of Germany. Seeing the wall come down left me speechless. Welcome, everybody. I should admit first that I'm really touched to be here and uh, I'm keeping the role of somebody who is privileged to talk to you. And I take this opportunity to remember at least the moment uh, as I recognized the, the wall came down. This was about things you haven't expect. But this is, for a scientist, not very difficult to understand and to live with that. And then, not only that, to take lessons from there. So, we're talking about in-depth changes. In-depth changes is always a collective endeavor. And I should also mention that, of course, it's maybe a triviality to you, but our walls are always connected to lessons for mankind. And that is, this shows the long, long way to civilization. And you may ask yourself, are we already civilized? What is the definition of civilization? And the way to civilization is twofold, at least twofold. I make it simple. It is first the pressure not to rest. And the second thing is we don't know for what all. It doesn't explain, but it says there is a way we have to go. I'm not talking about religion, but it could have been also interpreted in terms of religion that with or without blood of humans we go further. And what seems to be always the prerequisite of doing so is difficult, but I should take a picture for that. I should put it in an allegory. And the allegory is what, uh, what have the Chinese war and the President of the United States of America in common? Well, first of all, they are most visible, dunning witnesses of the stage of, we believe, civilization. We have seen presidents which did it well. And we learned this morning, and this is kind of a perspective one takes to understand, to put this in a, I should say, more simplified picture. However, we rely on that. We need this picture to rely on that. We also witness that we have examples, not only where president went well, but also presidents can do backwards. They could do it uh, more difficult, uh, and we are aware of drawbacks. Now let me come to the subject, which is changes, changes need energy, changes need that in particular we have to take the burden for collective efforts. And collective efforts means change and prosperity, and we all need that, of course, aren't free of charge. We have to do something for it. So this is um, odd in the first, things, uh, first instance if you hear that, but aren't free of charge is very clear. The issue to do so is energy. <coughs> And we sometimes believe energy is just getting out of the plug. Just energy, energy is everywhere. But however, as we know, once you have the energy, it has to be distributed and it has to do the order of orientation. What we uh, expect and which is, we learned also this morning about health and food and also education. And what is well known is and it's cited many times that energy is on the top, maybe on the top, of the 10 global problems, main problems uh, of mankind. Which means 
if you are thinking about how to maintain the source of energy, has some impact on other issues we're talking about every day. Okay, this can be also said in a Sunday speech. Everybody can say that. The question is how to change and what type of energy you need. Well, it's clear, it's out of town that the energy is limited. And the only thing um, we can easily uh, get connected to is the sun energy. And um, there are a lot of political things behind that discussion, but there is a truth, there is a solid truth behind that, which is we are certainly running out of fossils. This is not a fairy tale, that's true. But no, can, nobody can really imagine how the scenario would look like if we just win, if, if it's just uh, wait until it is over. So of course, responsibility, this was also a term we heard this, uh, today, um, so we have to go further and uh, develop ways of using solar energy. There's an unavoidable change in that. Well, since we're talking about the universe and the border or the walls of the universe, um, the only thing is we are connected to a relatively unimportant part of the universe which has a sun and the sun provides us a lot of energy and of course burning all the fuels we cause a lot of problems, CO2, climate change and all of that. So what about the vision, which is clear we have to find answers to manage artificial photosynthesis. And you can find articles in um, uh, literature where people promise to do so and so on, but it turns out this is very difficult to do. However, a start for changing is, for sure, that we would be able to have an energy source which is indefinite. It's like making energy from an indefinite source, and it's always connected to materials, and the materials we're talking about, uh, we would like to use, make use, more use of that is hydrogen. And there's a history for hydrogen. Hi hydrogen is a powerful uh, component, it's a powerful, powerful chemical, and you all know that the, phase, uh, the fate of hydrogen power is, uh, had some meaning to history, and I would like to do an experiment in front of you, and um, to show you that it is also part of civilization to be able using the hydrogen appropriately. And as you know, hydrogen is a light gas and it can be easily, it easily burns, which I will do the experiment. The privileged first rows, please open the mouse to make sure that the pressure balance is uh, going well. So, you see, hydrogen by itself is an energy rich compound and, um, well, and people learned how to civilize, but sometimes, as I showed you in this, in this uh, second graph, uh, some drawbacks could happen. Um, so I need the, the other balloon. Some drawbacks, so it starts uh, the scientific methodology to learn how to use, how to make use of hydrogen in an appropriate way to get it on a better control. And as you all know, um, and this is really to celebrate the fall of the Berlin Wall, you can't do better by using canal gas. But you see, uh, once you have done this experiment, you ask yourself, okay, you're a chemist, you might be suspicious to be a distrustive person, um, can you do even, even larger? And for that I have planned originally to invite, I have planned originally to invite our chancellor to assist me uh, she knew that already, so she left, and uh, so I do it myself without saying goodbye because there will nothing happen, because there are, there are other gases known which do this light behavior as hydrogen, but they do not burn. This is kind of an, um, a lesson taken by, um, a lesson taken by scientific methodology. But back to the subject, it is um, before and after. Now we know that uh, we are able to civilize the hydrogen, to give the hydrogen in its energy a direction. And this is based on a very well-developed method, which is quite known for a long time, which is the conventional fuel cell. And for the conventional fuel cell, you take hydrogen, the hydrogen gives the electrons to one part, and the electrons move to the other part, and therefore you have uh, power, you're producing power, you can light a bulb or so, and for that 
you need platinum. And the platinum and then something else to set up. And this enables you to use hydrogen in a well-behaved manner. And however, um, as we heard also this morning, we uh, have a serious problem. If everybody would like to use that in a different uh, uh, applications, we are running out of platinum because platinum is relatively expensive. So this is the Berlin answer to the crisis of the S-Bahn. Okay? You can do it yourself, start up um, to make um, a hydrogen car. And uh, the basis is, this is of course a joint project where you have solar electricity, you uh, uh, depleting water, and the water is then used in a fuel cell in order to make the car moving. And I do that here, we have a tank. We already expose this to light. So we have a tank of hydrogen and oxygen. And if I connect this here, I have to get rid of this leftovers of the hydrogen explosion. And then you see, no, you don't see, it should be. Ah, this is, ah, it does. Well, not really fast. <laughs> It's, I, I told you it's, it's pretty much like the S-Bahn in Berlin, so uh, you have to take your burden. Okay, it does. So you're invited to come and to enjoy, after my talk, this experiment. Okay, so we know that we, help, we can do that, and there are many departments who are able to do so. Now back to the question, how can we, how can we produce a large amount of hydrogen gas, because hydrogen gas is needed in a huge amount. We're talking about 500 billion cubic uh, meters uh, per year. But that means uh, you would have to cover the whole world with this appropriate equipment to do so. So the question is, um, it is difficult, however, if you never start, you will never be there. You will never win. Well, this is the subject we are talking about in Berlin, and we are doing in Berlin which is uh, catalysis research. There are different ways where you can energy, capture energy to split water into hydrogen and oxygen. And for that, you have this so-called Marriott broker, the catalyst, which is the mediator, to split water into the components, hydrogen and oxygen. And we do that uh, relatively successfully in Berlin by taking two approaches. The first one is a bio biological approach. You will see you can replace platinum by the trick nature is developed already, you're taking enzymes which are capable to do that. And the other one is the old dream, make it directly photocatalysis splitting of water. And catalysis, of course, is a mega international uh, connection network. And uh, this is also the case for Germany. So we are, of course, not the only one doing that. But in particular, for the North German region, I would say Berlin, Potsdam, and Rostock are very strong. Now, in our cluster of excellence, which is the largest cluster in the excellence initiative by itself, uh, we're developing how to unify the different strengths and to use them in order to make a much better yield of catalysis. We do that by, the, uh, by a consortium, which consists of uh, four universities and two Max Planck Institutes. And you can see a large number of people who are necessary to make this effort. Now, first example, hydrogen production. What you, what you do, basically, you learn from nature. So it's clear from the photosystem, which is a big machinery, you have two parts which are capable to split water into protons and hydrogen, uh, to, uh, protons and electrons. The electrons are transferred into the system which converts CO2 to value-added products, sugars, for example. And this is managed by another machinery, which is the photosystem one. Now, imagine you have an enzyme, which is also quite interesting. You can combine that. You have a combine, combination where enzymes which produce hydrogen, and if you fuse, that's what we do, this enzyme to the photosystem, uh, we are capable to produce hydrogen by an um, artificial enzyme system, which consists of photosystem 1, 2, and the hydrogenase, this is the enzyme of that. So if I click here a little bit, you see you can able, and that's just really what is going on, uh, you are capable to uh, couple the two relatively complex systems. And if you do so, you can replace platinum. You're using the components for the hydrogen production on one side and for the oxygen production on the other side, all based on biological systems. And by that, you can do the same thing, the same production of energy, but now without platinum. And I would say this is a really an interesting uh, breakthrough in that field. And if you have uh, interest in seeing that, we have prepared the experiments here. You can see it uh, as it is uh, by yourself. 
The last one is very short. It's um, actually I wanted to discover what is in between the, <clears throat> but I don't do this that much. Okay, so now you can you can of course the dream is hydrogen from water directly, and we should keep in mind it is very it's very difficult, very demanding. Nature photosynthesis is lousy, but it's huge. Solar reactors is much higher, electrolysis is higher. So we have a benchmark system um, which is based on 14% um, efficiency. We would like to combine a system which can do that. We do this by splitting the two reactions. Boom. We can do it by splitting the two reactions. And we do this by the combination of completely new materials. And this is the, the, the way of chemistry is doing this. Um, we can use completely new materials which are metal free or metal oxide based. And if you do that, we can in fact have materials which are currently unknown and even believed not to exist, which is for example in anodic material and ito material. You can of course make use of the whole spectrum of the sunlight and the whole spectrum of the sunlight is um, where you uh, embed, where you embed um, visible components, colors, dyes, for doing that more efficiently. Well, that's about it, what I would like to tell you. Uh, you saw my assistant. This was, of course, uh, something we, we appointed already. That's it is all based fascinating. on composition. But I'm sorry, your time it is, is up. based on composition, and I would like to thank all of you for your attention, and of course, the German taxpayers. They did a lot. Thank you very much. <laughs>